More than two years after the abrogation of Article 370 and 35A, finally there is some forward movement as far as investment in Jammu and Kashmir is concerned. Uh, it's a historic day in Jammu and Kashmir today. For the first time, a real estate summit is being organized and we have with us Mr. Niranjan Hiranandani. He is the vice chairman of National Real Estate Development Council. Mr. Hiranandani, first of all, many thanks for speaking to India today and welcome to the city of Temple. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be over here in Jammu today in a fantastic summit where we have seen the government, the government of India, housing ministry, uh, the state uh, over here, the lieutenant governor and other people, chief secretary and other people wanting to do and make a difference to the housing scenario as far as is concerned. Every state is vying for investments to come into for the purposes of real estate. I'm so happy to see a proactive interest taken by the government and I'm sure that uh, this development will be better for the people of Jammu and Kashmir. Right. Sir, do you think that real estate sector has a potential in Jammu and Kashmir? It's not only Jammu and Kashmir, whole of India. There is potential in UP, there's a potential in Maharashtra, there's potential in Mumbai, there's potential in Bangalore, in Chennai. Now, you have to create the environment that the best of people should come to you. People are already here, there are good developers here. But if you want massive development to take place, if you want infrastructure to come, if you want uh, employment, if you want income, then you have to do more proactive regulation, give some incentives which the governor has just announced in terms of stamp duty. All that will go to make that difference. If you make that difference, more investments will come into Jammu and Kashmir. The second part, which is more important, is that the people should want it. It's not about a top-down approach that I want to put money here. I'm invited by every government in India, state government in India. So it's not about J and K. I have all the option. You have to create that mahol that we get attracted. Right. Mr. Hiranandani, uh, you <laughs> talked about uh, concessions for investment. Uh, uh, from this podium, JNK, LG, Manoj Sina, you know, <coughs> talked about many measures which the JNK government has taken. He said that uh, the government has come up with many, you know, is investment friendly policies. He talked about the single window clearance system. Do you think that it's going to, you know, create an atmosphere for investment in Jammu and Kashmir? In life, you have to take steps in the right direction. The governor has also announced stamp duty reduction. Of course, the amount was not told. We expect about 60% stamped waiver for a period of one year. However, when government takes one step, it's up to the people to take advantage of it. Now, if they take the steps and you don't take advantage of it, you've lost out. So whether it is private sector or it is the people of Jammu and Kashmir, it's up to you actually how to take benefit of a regulatory framework which they are trying to do. We are invited to every state in the country. So we'll have to check which is more favorable. We are happy with what steps have been taken. But I'm sure more and more steps, whether ease of doing business, whether stamp duty, whether the way they will facilitate infrastructure, all those will become issues that we will have to see. But today I can tell you that response of the government is huge and tremendous. So what will be your message to the people, you know, who have certain doubts and apprehensions? They are saying that if investment will come to Jammu and Kashmir, uh, local people will lose jobs and, you know, it's going to impact the local industry. What will be your message? How are you going to address their concerns? You can fool some people all the time, all the people some of the time, but not all the people all the time. The, no country in the world, whether it is China, whether it's uh, Bangladesh, whether it is Dubai, whether it's Singapore, have made money and prosperity because investment has come to Dubai, come to China, come to Singapore, come to Hong Kong, come to that place. If you don't want investment in your state, how can you bring prosperity? How can you compete with the world? You're the most beautiful country in the world. The whole of India has less tourists than one city called Dubai. Kashmir is such a beautiful place. Both Jammu and Kashmir. Both Jammu and Kashmir is so, so, so beautiful. You can get more tourists in JNK than in Dubai. But we are not even one millionth of Dubai in terms of number of tourists. 
there is one hotel set up in Dubai every day. One hotel, not room. One hotel set up in Dubai every single day for the last 10 years. So obviously, do you want prosperity in, in JNK? I want it. Everybody wants it. But if you say some people are opposed to prosperity, I think that's, I, I'm not able to understand that.